So, there is the same composition of what thing? The interstitial fluid and plasma. Interstitial fluid and plasma. In the plasma, if something is more, what will happen? Uh, that will go inside the cell. There are some exceptions. So, what are the exception? Except few things are more in the plasma. Uh, so, in plasma, right, in plasma uh, is more. Few things are more. What are those few things? Albumin. Albumin is type of a protein and what I told you is uh, the protein going inside the cell is much difficult, right, because the diffusibility is not there, right. So, it is not a lipid soluble substance, so it cannot diffuse inside the cell, so it is more in the plasma, right. Then uh, another protein that is globulin, clotting factors, etc., etc some factors are more in the plasma, right. Now, we discuss about this exchange uh, system. So, what is the benefit of that exchange is all exchange, whatever exchange is happening, all exchange between the cells, all exchange between the cells and vessels occurs at the interstitial fluid level. Uh, whatever uh, substances are going towards the cell or from the cell towards the plasma, they must go through the interstitial fluid, right. So, uh, interstitial fluid have a major role and that forms, this interstitial fluid will form the internal environment of the body, internal environment of the body which is known as, which is known as, yes, we already discussed in the beginning itself which is known as milieu interior, milieu interior, right. So, milieu interior uh, which is coined by W.B. Cannon, but introduced by Claude Bernard, which is the father of physiology. So, interstitial fluid is important for the milieu interior or internal environment. Uh, so, composition of interstitial fluid is always need to be maintained, right? Why? Because it is maintaining the internal environment. So, it should be maintained very well. So, composition of interstitial fluid is always maintained constant by constant by body regulatory mechanisms, body's regulatory mechanisms, right. And that is known as, yes, the basic principle of physiology, that is known as homeostasis. So, that is known as homeostasis, right. Okay. So, if examiners ask you which is the uh, internal, maintaining the internal environment, remember it comes in the extracellular fluid. The examiner will ask you that either it is ECF or ICF. Remember the interstitial fluid is the part of ECF. So, the for the home uh, regulation of uh, or the homeostatic regulation, uh, the ECF will maintain the internal environment, internal environment but extracellular fluid, internal environment it is maintained by extracellular fluid, right. Okay, we are discussing about the body fluids, how we can estimate the body fluid, uh, estimation on the body fluids, 
that is the next question estimation of body fluid. Next topic estimation. of the body fluid right. What happens is we will give a dye for that matter any substance for that particular compartment. If we are giving it for the ECF we should take care that it should not cross the yes uh, the cell membrane right. For example if we give the protein which cannot cross the cell membrane we will get the uh, idea of what thing yes the uh, ECF but we will give already measured substance right. We measured a substance and we will inject it into a person vessels right or uh, for that matter in the plasma right. What will happen? We will allow it to distribute uh, in that chamber uh, overall in the body and we will take a sample of few ml and via its concentration we will get to know that how much the body fluid is there in that particular compartment right. So, we are already uh, we are giving the already known amount of a substance then we will allow it to distribute in the compartment and what we are doing uh, once it is distributed it will achieve the same concentration as the body fluid on that particular compartment and then onwards we will take a, a sample of few ml and by that we can measure the that particular compartments fluid uh, availability right. So, what is the formula for that? Concentration formula for it is concentration is equal to amount of solute upon volume amount of solute upon the volume. Now, we know the concentration whenever after taking the samples what we have to calculate the volume. So, what will the what will be the formula for volume amount of solute upon concentration amount of solute upon concentration. We already give the solute by measuring it right. For example, I gave 10 ml of iodine. So, I know that right and I will take a sample and if I get suppose 0.5 ml of uh, iodine afterwards right. So, I can calculate it. So, I am giving it already measured solute then I am checking the concentration. Both the values I will get it right. This is already measured the concentration how we will get it via sampling. We will take a venous sample for that right and via sampling we will get the concentration and the method we use for this is known as dye dilution method. Dye dilution method for what thing? We are checking the volume, we are checking the volume. So, for volume estimation. for volume estimation, dye dilution method for volume estimation and we know that uh, formula will be volume is equal to rather than amount of amount of solute we will write amount of dye upon its concentration which we got from the sampling right. If uh, the dye leaks out uh, the or rapid metabolism write down somewhere else. Uh, in the short note that what happens if the dye leaks out. We measured it, but what happened while inserting what happened is the dye leaks out or it is having the rapid metabolism or rapid excretion, rapid excretion or dye binds to tissues. We gave some uh, inappropriate dye right uh, and it binds to the tissue or it is having rapid excretion, rapid metabolism or it leaks out by chance. So, it will give a low concentration, it will give a low concentration 
and as we see, we can see over here the concentration is inversely proportional to the volume right so what will happen to the volume will get false high volume will get false high volume will get false high volume this is the favorite questions of all the university examiners right what will happen if this will happen if the dye leaks out or if the uh, you gave the dye which is rapidly metabolized so what will happen so you must be knowing that it will give the false high volume and vice versa if there is a measurement error so what will happen if you measure it uh, uh, less what will happen yes you'll get a false low volume okay so let's discuss what are the dyes that are used in some universities there are uh, mcq kind of tutorials will occur so in that uh, the dye used are asked already so uh, for the total body water let's discuss for the total body water uh, it's a water right we want something similar to the water so that it can penetrate everywhere inside the cell also so what we give is we give heavy water for that heavy water we give actually the isotope which having a similar structure of the water but not the water right similar structure isotope hmm? which is heavier in the weight that's it so that's why it is known as heavy water examples are deuterium oxide and tritium oxide right oxide or tritium oxide right deuterium oxide or tritium oxide if these two are not available we can use amino pyrins also and where there are there are three options it is a chance of high chance of having the uh, mcqs on this topic so for the total body water we use deuterium oxide tritium oxide and amino pyrins right what is for ecf then for ecf we use the dye uh, which cannot enter inside the um, cell membrane that's how uh, will not get the volume of icf will only get the volume of ecf right so it should not cross the cell membrane and it should not go inside the cell so that should be uh, the property of that particular dry, dye so either we can use the big size molecule and uh, which is lipid insoluble so big size polypeptide we can use or big size any lipid insoluble substance we can use which cannot penetrate the cell membrane and that's how we can get the only <coughs> ecf volume not the icf right what are the example for it polysaccharides sugars right polysaccharides they are having many many chains so it cannot enter inside the yes cell membrane easily and they will distribute overall in the uh, ecf uh, compartments and we will get the volume of ecf what else uh, for example uh, the inulin another example is inulin sucrose we can use sucrose one more thing is mannitol mannitol is actually a drug whenever we are uh, learning about the renal system we'll go over there uh, mannitol is actually a drug but it can be used for the ecf measurement right sucrose is uh, nothing but the polymer of fructose uh, and the inulin it is a big sugar molecule right the uh, polymer of fructose polymer of fructose and uh, sucrose is made up of glucose plus fructose remember the fructose is not going easily uh, into the cells that's why we use the fructose uh, to measure the ecf volume uh, 